Hey, welcome back to Homegrown Country Home Place, friends. How y'all doing today? We all might hear my leather shop this morning, and we're getting a little rain this morning. Uh, it's not raining real hard outside. You can probably hear it, might be able to hear it anyway on my roof up here. And uh, I just thought I'd bring y'all along for a little video today and show you what I was uh, working on. Um, I made this Buck 110, or it'll work for a Buck 112 also. Little universal type knife sheath right here show you that right there and uh, it's a molded sheath and, and I say it's universal kind of because this particular one y'all I made it uh, just a little bit shorter uh, so it worked for either the buck 110 or the 112 and I'll just show you what I'm talking about it's um, what the buck 110 looks like in this sheath and uh, here's what the buck 112 looks like so it, it'll work for either one uh, but uh, I generally make these uh, this particular style for the buck uh, 110 knife and uh, this particular one is in walnut and I've got to uh, I'm going to put my beeswax leather conditioner on it and I just got to kind of buff it and polish it a little bit and I got to uh, do the edges there burnished the edges I haven't burnished the edges yet so I just thought I'll bring you along this morning and talk to you a little bit while I was doing that and uh, what I use uh, for burnishing edges uh, most time I use tokeno that's this stuff right here that's what I normally use for the edges it does a real good job sometimes I use water if I'm just say if I don't put no uh, dyed on edges of the leather and I just, uh, just want to keep a natural you no know, look uh, a lot of times I'll use water I, I won't put anything like token oil on it I just use water and uh, that does good um, one thing like a token oil is once you burnish the edges with it it don't take long and a lot of burnishing to get it you know like you want it the water takes longer if you, you just use water or say put a little uh, beeswax on it and uh, or saddle soap something like that it take a little bit longer in my opinion but this makes it a lot easier and it sound, it sound like it does a real good job y'all and uh, so that's what I'm doing this morning just gonna finish this little sheath up here and uh, y'all been enjoying this rain uh, just a nice little slow little rain and uh, like I said the garden down there don't necessarily need it, but it's not hurting it either. It's just a good slow rain just soaking in. And that's the type of rain I like on my garden, y'all. Just a good slow rain that uh, soak in and it don't wash anything away. I don't know what it is, y'all. It seems like most time my luck when I plant a garden, don't matter if it's in the spring or in the fall. I plant a garden and as soon as I put the seeds out. And I know the rain's coming, and I'll try to time it, you know, that way. Because once it gets wet down there, it, it stays wet for a while, it seems like. And so i got to time it just right. It never fails. It seems like it's always a really hard rain uh, when it rains. And uh, But fortunately, something like, you know, a fall garden is really not real critical. Um, most times just throwing some mustard green seeds, turnip seed, radish seed, something like that. Um, so it's really not that critical as far as uh, if it does get washed there. What bothers me, y'all, whenever I plant a spring garden, like my peas, butter beans, or if I'm planting some corn or something, and I'll, uh, especially the okra, uh, it's hard enough to come up anyway. And uh, I don't know how y'all do y'all's uh, okra seeds. The way I do mine, I soak mine in some water usually for uh, sometimes a whole day y'all I'll soak it the whole day in water before I can get ready to plant them and that seems like it helps germinate them uh, the seeds a little bit quicker and uh, the thing about the okra seeds if it gets a heavy rain it gets beat down y'all it just uh, I always have to replant my okra seeds seems like every year just because it it comes like real heavy rain and beats them down but uh, y'all probably thinking well, man just ain't never seen you we had on before well a lot of times y'all this this hat here i probably like a scarecrow i know <laughs> i 
but I like his old hat, and I'm thinking about buying me a new hat, y'all. I've had this hat a good many years now. now actually, y'all, this is uh, my second hat like this. My other one's a little bit different, but this here is just getting a little bit floppy. And uh, I, when it's raining, y'all, I don't grab my cap. I always grab my hat, and um, I just, it just, I've always done that. And um, especially during the fall and winter time. I mean, you see me a lot of times wearing my hat just because that's, that's, I don't know, I like wearing a hat during the winter months especially. And even if sometimes, sometimes you might see me with this hat on, if I'm working in the garden or something like that, you'll see me wearing this hat uh, because it keeps the sun off my my head. And, well, let me say, some of you may not even know. Uh, I, I don't know. If you've seen some of my videos, you've probably seen me before with a hat on. But if y'all look, I don't have no hair on my head. And, uh, well, y'all know what happens when you don't have no hair to protect you. You'll get a sunburn up there when it's, uh, when it's hot outside. So that's why y'all always see me wearing a cap or a hat or something. And, uh, I was a mechanic for near 20 years, y'all. And, uh, I always wore a cap working. And, uh, there's a reason for that also. I know this ain't not got nothing much to do about leather. I'm just kind of talking to y'all this morning. Hope y'all don't mind that. Uh, I just figure uh, come in here and get this done here and uh, talk to y'all a little while. But when I was a mechanic, I always wore a cap because working on the cars and walking under the lifts, I'll tell you the, the, the worst two things that happened, or, well, a couple of things that happened, you're gonna bump your head and that just pretty much seals it up there, you know you're gonna bump your head time and time again and if you don't have no hair on your head that's just a little bit less protection you have there to uh you know keeping your head from getting a, a, a bump or a scratch on your head so <clears throat> i always wore a cap and also you got the hot hot exhaust up under your your uh you know, vehicle and and you raise up and you burn the top of your head or you'll be walking up under there real quick real busy and you'll bump into the lift and you know, that cap always kind of, you know, helped me with the bib part of it. I'd kind of bump that bib on that something that lets me know, oh, I'm getting a little bit too close, you know. So I've uh, pretty much all my life, at least from my teenage years, I've always wore caps and hats. And um, so uh, this morning, like I say, it's raining, you know, drizzling rain, and, and I thought I'd so well, I just put my cap on. So I know, I mean, my hat on. I said, I'm not, I'm not y'all probably don't ever see me in this, but uh, I thought it'd be, uh, somebody might find it a little funny. It kind of, it kind of looks really droopy and stuff like that right there. And uh, your seat when it gets wet, y'all, man, it, it really droops down. But um, I like it because my head don't get wet. And um, it's like caps. When I wear a cap, y'all, I don't wear a cap that's vented because the back of it, you know, it's got all them holes in it. I can just, I don't know, it just feels like it's open back here. I always wear a cap that's completely, you know, uh, made out of cotton, something like that. It's not uh, not no vintage type cap. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how I got talking about all that kind of stuff, y'all. I guess that's what happens when you kind of doing what I'm doing right now, just kind of burnishing these edges right here on this sheath here. And uh, this sheet, y'all, is made out of uh, nine to ten ounce leather, and I made some out of eight nine ounce. But uh, I can tell you, my favorite for this particular style sheath is a nine to ten ounce leather. It just uh, it's a little bit more beefy looking, and it's really heavy duty you know just a really heavy duty type sheath that will last a long long time and uh seem like i do pretty good when i make these seem like you know generally for the buck 110 anyway uh i've all of them i've ever made i've, I've sold so it's one of them items uh it seems like people likes when I put it up. So hopefully this in here won't last 
uh, too long when I put it up. I think about y'all when y'all when you put stuff on Etsy when you make stuff. You know, you never know who's looking at your stuff on there and what they're wanting. So it's kind of some bit of gamble doing this the way I do it. You know, if you doing like a say like a custom order or something like say some somebody wants something in particular, it's always easier as far as you know making your money back. You know, it's more timely, I guess you can say it that way. But whenever you're making stuff to putting on a um, selling platform like Etsy. You never know what somebody's really needing or wanting or what they like, you know. So it's like it's it's kind of taking a gamble when we make stuff, but you kind of learn what sells and what 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 don't sell. There's been some things I made before that didn't work out, and pretty much I just pulled off of it because they it stayed on there so long, relisted so many times, and I said, well, this is obviously not something people's interested in, so I just pull it. And, and I've got stuff in my inventory that I haven't sold. And what I'll do, I'll donate it, you know. Probably donate it uh, to somebody or somebody I know that needs a sheath or something. And I don't have a, just a whole lot of them, y'all. Because uh, generally I try to make what I think of sell. But um, you just kind of, you know, taking a risk whenever you're putting stuff on Etsy. Plus you got a lot of competition, y'all. Um, so when you go put your stuff on there and what was different to me y'all on Etsy for me anyway you know you're you're in direct competition with a lot of different uh, sellers on there and some of them are from overseas and, and a lot of times they don't give great details regardless if it's overseas or here in the United States they don't give a lot of details what you know what they do to their leather uh, product or sheath and my for my instance anyway sheaths that's generally what I make knife sheaths but they don't really give a lot of details I try to give a pretty good description exactly what you're gonna be getting the pictures and stuff what you see is what you're gonna get it's not gonna be like one picture of a sheath I've made say a year ago and it's gonna be something real similar I don't do that I take my time to uh, post uh, pictures of the actual product what you're gonna be getting that way you you're not gonna be like well That's not the same one. I'm, I was looking at because uh, y'all when you uh, If you know anything about dyeing leather and stuff like that It don't matter how many times you can take a, a piece of leather and you can dye it and it will not turn out Exactly the same way every time you can use the same dye you try to do the same process It might be real close, but it will never look the same. That's why I custom made or uh, handmade um, items a lot of times they're they're exactly that they're just handmade and they're going to differ a little bit from you know from uh, sheath to sheath or product leather product and the same way you know regardless of what you're making it could be a wood product it may look almost almost the same but it's never going to be the same it's always going to be different or if you're making a knife you know your knife it won't never be exactly the same because it's handmade and uh, it's not it's not stamped out with or cut out with CNC machine. Yeah, everything's a little bit different. And um, but uh, I guess that's a good thing though, as far as I'm concerned, you know, because you know it's uh, it just it, it looks it's more natural looking that you know it's been done. You know, it, it ain't just like a everybody ain't gonna have exactly the same thing. Everything gonna be different, you know, you know. And that's why it's a little bit hard, you know, you know, try, somebody say, well, can you make one just like this? And I'll tell us, well, I can try to, but, you know, it's probably won't look exactly like it, but it'll be close. But uh, now y'all got this kind of burnished there after talking all this time here. Uh, I didn't want to just sit here and just kind of show you me just burnishing on this uh, sheath all that time. So now y'all, what I do, I take some... Uh, and everybody got their own different things they like doing. Some people don't want to put anything on it. Some people want to put beeswax on the edges of it. Uh, some people want to do whatever, you know. Um, uh, resiline. Uh, uh, you might put like a, a sheen, some kind of um, uh, different type sprays on it. And but I, I like using tan coat, y'all, uh, on a lot of my stuff. It seems like that just works good for me and uh, for what I like 
you know, my sheets to turn out. And uh, sometimes y'all, and like I say, you know, I don't know about y'all, have y'all been doing something and have something just like you want it? And then all of a sudden it don't, for me instance, I have some dye or something left on my hand. I didn't or pick up a, a bottle of dye and put it up and have some dye left on my fingers and I'll pick up my sheath and be like, oh no, and get a, a darker spot on my sheath. And I'll be like, man, I have to go back and re-dye it, refinish it and everything just because that one little mistake at the very end, right before I was getting ready. And that, that that's bothersome for me anyway. Uh, because at that point, it almost messes the whole thing up because it, you can't leave it on there. I mean, it's obvious. So you got to go back and dye your either with a different color. And uh, if y'all, uh, have you ever ran into that before? Ever happened to y'all? Just leave a comment down below. Or it don't have to be with leather work. It could be anything. It could be you know, whatever you do, woodwork, knife making, or whatever, you know, kind of uh, stuff you do on the side or whatever. Or for a living or whatever. Um, so I just I just put this tan coat on, kind of rub it in, and um, I'll probably put minimal of two coats, sometimes three coats of that on there, and uh, it's just gonna kind of help seal the edges in a little bit, and also it makes it look nice. It puts a little sheen to the edge. You can see right there, that's gonna be like one uh, coat right there. And it don't take long for this to dry for you to put another coat on there. And uh, so I'm just going to let that sit there for just a little bit there. And uh, give me some more here. If it looks good, y'all, to me in uh, two coats, that's what I do. I just kind of base it off what it looks like. That's pretty much everything, you know. I, I based off, you know, what it looks like and get it where, where you know, I want it and happy with it. And like I say, if it takes three coats, even four, I'll do that, you know. Um, most time, two coats usually gets it pretty good. let that dry there all right so i got that done and uh now i'm just gonna give me a paper towel and i'm just gonna buff buff it a little bit there and don't take too much on that um like i said i done put my beeswax leather conditioner on it several different times i just kind of let it dry a little bit now come back and buff it off and then for, say somebody buys this uh, sheath, I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. I'll put another coat on it right there at, at my table in the kitchen. And I'll buff it just like I'm doing right now. And uh, I'll box it up and send it on out to them. So, need to say, when I make something for the leather sheath, it does have a lot of different little steps and stuff that I do to it. And, a lot of this, you know, um, probably a lot, most people don't worry about, but it's one of the things that you know, I take pride in, try to anyway, right? Even down to the shipping of your knife sheath. I take time, you know, trying to uh, box it up and package it up good so you know, it won't get damaged in the mail. So when you get it, maybe, you know, it should be just the same way when I went left to my house. You should get it, you know, and arrive real, just like, you know, I sent it out, you know. But, uh, thing about, you know, getting back talking about selling stuff on Etsy, you have a lot of different sellers and, you know, Sometimes the cheapest thing is not the best, you know, and, and the most expensive thing is not always the best. So really, you know, it's kind of funny sometimes, you know, 
reviewed and stuff when people get my knife shoes you know they'll be like you know it's more than what they expected you know you know they it, it's a lot nicer than they, you know thought it would be you know and there may be some that didn't ever leave me no kind of reviews or anything or comments and maybe they thought my knife shoes wasn't as good as they expected you know you don't never know but generally speaking you kind of know your own work and what it should be and how good uh something should be you know and that's that's all different perspectives too you know uh, everybody got their own you know different perspective on what something should be but uh like in mine no i got a certain standard where i you know know where i want my stuff how it should be looking if i'm happy and like i say i've, I've I made stuff for that i wasn't happy with and it never did get put up listed you know i still got it right now and it just didn't pass my inspection that i didn't want to sell nobody it'd be a completely useful sheath nothing wrong with it but uh it just didn't been pass my inspection something i you know wouldn't want to sell somebody y'all so um Y'all got this here finished. I know I know it took a while. Uh, probably talking to y'all here and that camera make sure it's still on. <clears throat> There's what looks like right there with it kind of buffed and polished there. So it's ready to, not today. I won't take no pictures up today, but when that weather's a little bit better, I'll take uh, pictures of that. And I'll, I'll, I'll list it on my Etsy store there and I'll leave a link to my Etsy shop right there in this video it won't be a link to this particular sheath but if anybody's interested in that sheath right there like I say um, uh, for buck 110 uh, it'll work for buck 110 and if, in my opinion it fits the best for that knife right there as far as you know that's what generally I make it for but you know if you got a little buck 112 It'll work for that also. I mean, uh, it just sits a little bit deeper there. If you like it, you know, uh, might be what you need in there. You know, I did have a customer, y'all. He uh, he wanted a, uh, I call it like a nice slip, but it's a sheath. Uh, but it's made like a, uh, a slip. And he needed it for a buck, uh, 112. And, uh, he did not want the buck 112, you know, sticking up. He wanted like recessed down in there pretty deep. About like what I just showed you there. That's how he wanted his, you know, he wanted his sitting way deep in it. So I made him that, you know, for him. But uh, anyway, y'all, I hope this video ain't been too long. I just thought I'd bring y'all along while I was out here finishing up this sheath right here and do a little talking today. Uh, I know I don't do a lot of videos like this, but you know, I just figure, you know, I'm going to start trying to do a little bit more content on my YouTube channel there. And y'all going to see a lot of different things um, coming up. It's just not going to be necessarily my leather work. Because like I say, normally I don't do a lot of videos on my leather work because I'm doing a lot of the same thing. I don't do a lot of custom stuff just because it takes a lot of time, a lot of times and figuring out new patterns. I will do it, you know. Um, but uh because i've let's say i've actually done a good bit of that actually uh, somebody needs something if something i could do you know and there's been some things y'all that i had to tell them i couldn't do you know didn't be honest with it didn't make much sense you know uh, i know um a guy wanted a uh sheath say on um, let me see here i don't know if he ain't got one y'all but say something similar to this right here the sheath right here they want to sheath something like that right there just for a look like a little buck i can't remember the model number y'all it's a really tiny two blade knife the knife is like uh ooh, maybe three inches yeah i think the knife is like three inches long he wanted a belt sheath for for you know and i told him i said well i said i'll just be honest we uh, it's gonna be hard to do that because of the time you know you figure out you know the size of your loop on your back of your you know the, the 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 sheath itself pretty much the whole back side with the sheath uh you know the loop would be pretty much the whole back side of that knife sheath and a look and plus by the time the fold over design 
I told him, I said, I can make you a knife slip. You know, you slip in your pocket, you know, put your pocket knife in your slip. And uh, he didn't He didn't really want that. He wanted a, uh, a um, you know, belt carry sheath for his knife. <clears throat> and I told him, I said, yeah, I can't. I won't be able to do that, you know. I just don't, you know. I could probably, but it just ain't going to look right. And I didn't want to mess with it because it wouldn't be worth my time, to be honest with you, trying to do a pattern for a one-off knife I know I you know nobody else would probably ever ask me to make. And um, I know a lot of people say, well, just charge more for it. But, you know, that, I, I have a problem charging, uh be honest with you, for stuff, you know. Uh, I just, you know, I enjoy what I do. And... uh it, 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 the the way it was for me when I was a mechanic too, y'all. If I worked on somebody's stuff, you know, help them out and stuff, um, you know, I didn't charge. I, I didn't really charge much, to be honest with you. And uh, and I got away from that just because I got people used me a lot of times, you know, through the years. You know, uh, in my opinion, you know, um, I pretty much do a lot of a lot of work, and I just base charge just a little bit and just basically helping them out, you know, and. It got, you know, to the point where, you know, you have people coming back and back and forth and stuff. And that's my own fault, you know. I'm sure they would pay me what I asked them, but, you know, it's just one of them things, you know. Uh, I always had an issue trying to figure out how much charge somebody just because, uh, you know, it's one of them things, you know. But this here, you know, knife, knife sheath, stuff like that, you know, uh, I had a little bit better idea, you know, what I like charging, what I think is a fair price, you know. And, uh. Some people are surprised a lot of times by, you know, the, the amount, you know, that I charge. They, they figure that's a great deal, you know. And, and I, I feel it is, you know, for most parts, you know. Uh, I'm not, you know, trying to make a lot of money while I do this kind of stuff. I just like help pay for bills, you know, bills and stuff I have, you know. And uh, so I do enjoy doing it, and I'm going to continue to do it. Uh, but uh, like I said in a previous video, uh, I'm going to start doing my blacksmith uh blacksmithing i'm not gonna say you know it's, it's gonna be like for monetary reasons or anything like that but for me it's just uh it's the idea about being being able to do something that you want to do and uh like I say if, uh, if i'm able to sell some of the stuff that i make in the blacksmith shop i'll do that too but um anyway y'all uh i know this video is probably pretty long and uh, I hope it hasn't been too boring. If you're still with me there, I uh, appreciate y'all watching. And I uh, appreciate y'all uh, leaving comments and everything like that. I appreciate y'all, my new subscribers and everything. Um, so I'm going to be working a little bit more on uh, trying to do more content on my YouTube channel. And uh, appreciate y'all coming along. And as always, friends, for my family years, y'all have a blessed day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.